Um, our next speaker is uh, Professor Yong Jik Kwon, and he's going to be talking about synthetically tamed viruses for cancer therapy. We all know how deadly viruses can be. They have the capacity to make us incredibly sick and even induce death. But what if we could tame that strength of the virus and use it for good? Dr. Kwan is going to describe his efforts to re-engineer viruses and turn them into cancer hunters. Dr. Kwan received his PhD from the University of Southern California in 2003. He was a postdoctoral scholar at UC Berkeley from 2003 to 2005. He set up his own lab at Case Western Reserve University and was there until 2007 when he moved to UCI. Since coming to UCI, he has won the Faculty Early Career Development Award from the National Science Foundation and the Medical Research Award, Gabriel's Angel Foundation for Cancer Research. He also runs the Biotherapeutics and Engineering Laboratory, Biotel, which seeks out novel methods to develop smart therapies and diagnostics. All right, thank you, Rob. Um, so today, um, I'm going to talk about a little bit of exciting science that has been really known to public. So here are the examples. So I'm pretty sure many of you have watched this movie. Um, but uh, what I want to really say is that you know, Hollywood always you know, loves the crazy scientists and uh, conspiracy theory, things like that. But we are really trying to make really emerging really therapy to help people. OK, and one of the forms of emerging therapies in, in the clinic even is gene therapy. And uh, uh, to, to, to be surprised a little bit, there are about 2,000 clinical trials going on already around the world. And uh, surprisingly, many of the clinical trials are using viruses, including adenovirus, which is a common cold virus. Everybody in this room you know, may see them all the time every year, and the retrovirus, and the vaccine virus. That's the first, very first virus used in the, the vaccination against the smallpox. And also adenovirus, virus, and the pox, and the antivirus, even the herpes. Okay? And uh, even in the late 2012, the European Union uh, put the first virus-based generic drugs to be sold in the market and, and used in the clinic uh, to cure lipoprotein lipase deficiency. Okay? And the most clinical trials are the target cancer because that's a really big deal. And uh, obviously, the uh, traditional the therapy did not work out very well. And the monogenesis, such as fibrosis, uh, fibrosis, uh, fibrosis, cystic fibrosis, and infectious disease such as AIDS and things like that, cardiovascular disease, and so forth. So how the viruses can cure cancer? So one of the ways uh, the virus can cure cancer is basically to induce the death of the cells directly or by <laughs> activating uh, sensitivity for uh, certain drugs. So that when you give the drug, and that drug never works on the heart cells. But uh, the cancer cells are infected by viruses, and uh, the, the virus activates the drugs to kill the cells. Okay? Another way is called oncolytic viruses. These viruses are engineered to be uh, proliferated only in cancer cells. They just infect the cancer cells, and they just, you know, uh, you know uh, proliferate crazy, and they disrupt the cancer cells and spread to the next day cancer cells. Another way to cure the, um, the cancer, uh, cancer cells by viruses is to boost up the immune systems. One of the ways is to engineer the T cells by putting the viruses to recognize particular cancer cells so that usually T cells can never receive the cancer cells, that's why the cancer cells survive. But we can re-engineer T cells by putting some viruses to re-engineer the cellular properties. So basically, um, when you are saying we are healthy, that's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything is the same. Actually, a lot of things are happening in the equilibrium. So basically, in our body, there will be very well balanced deaths between survival. So every day we get the new cells, but also we are looking at our cells because they are too old. But in cancer, basically, we don't have this balance anymore. Basically, there are a lot more cells to survive rather than just disappear in balance. So um, they have a lot of cancer therapy trying to enforce the cells by putting a lot of drugs using uh, can, uh, chemotherapy or putting some ways to uh, cure uh, or kill the cells. But the problem with this uh, conventional therapy is that we have to put a lot of forces toward the death. That's quite difficult to achieve, and uh, often we need to put a lot of drops, and there will be a lot of side effects, and, and we are already suffering from the resistance against the drops. So uh, one of the, um, the, the, the cancers that I want to talk is the predatory chromosome. Um, that is very well known as um, one of the, um, the, the major causes of the many forms of leukemia, including chronic uh, malignant leukemia, and some other subsets of leukemia. So there is a very good drug for um, this form of leukemia that's called Cleva or Imatinib. It's uh, basically you know, very rationally designed the chemical drugs. 
So this drug has been working great, and uh, a lot of people are really excited about this drug. Okay, but one of the problems with this uh, the drug is that this drug cannot kill leukemia cells. They somehow stop growing the cells so that this drug basically keeps all the cancer cells. And also, in time, um, you know, the cancer cells are smart enough to develop resistance. So that has been a huge problem. So, um, uh, the, my laboratory I just show in the quantum sequence sciences here, uh, what we are really trying to do is not only just pushing towards the task, but we have to relieve a little bit on the survival process. So basically, we want to express some of the death proteins in the cells. At the same time, we want to silence the oncogenic activity. By doing this, we can, we can uh, get the really feasible therapy by doing really small amount of drugs. Um, not, not necessarily being loud with the materials at the same time. And because we are uh, tackling two multiple pathways so that the cancer cells can never really develop the resistance at the same time to the multiple pathways involved. So what you are really trying to make is a magic bill, right? By creating the viral particles at template and then we put some of the synthetic materials so that we call this a kind of marine nanoparticles. So we uh, use the adenosis virus, which is one of the um, pathogenic human viruses, but there has been no documented disease caused by these viruses. Uh, we just uh, you know, use this AV to express the death proteins, and then we put the secondary materials which reduce the oncogenic activity. So that as a research, we had polymer and the virus uh, primary materials uh, expressing uh, death proteins at the same time, reducing the oncogenic activity. So basically, this starts getting in, and that just express some uh, suicidal genes and the silence the oncogenic activity, basically. That's what we redesigned. And the very really interesting aspect of this approach is that these materials are so specific because um, these materials will be efficient when the, there's a cancerous activity one. So in this case, when you put our materials in the non-specific cancer cells, there's no effect. But when we uh, look at uh, the cells incubated with our materials, uh, with the flooded chromosome positive leukemia, we can see that there was a really significant impact on these cells, basically killing the cells with um, the cells having this particular form of chromosome mutation. So we put this materials in the animal, and uh, as you can see here, uh, no treatment, and uh, that's protein only, and oncogenic activity silencing only, and our nanomaterials, as you can see that, our animals were doing a lot better, and uh, extended their uh, life actually much more significantly, and almost like stopped the growth of the, um, the cancer cells, basically. Then uh, when we are talking about uh, the use these materials for human patients, and uh, many people will raise the question, hey, this material is safe. You know, nobody want to get injected by the viruses, of course. So one of the big provocation is immune uh, responses because I'm pretty sure the most of the people in this room will have the um, immunity against the viruses, right? So we tested this material um, by putting this material into the animals and then we collected the serum and then we tested uh, whether this uh, animal ever developed immunity against these viruses. The result is quite surprising and promising. So our materials did not get recognized by the immune system and also even did not uh, provoke the immune system at all upon even um, the repeated administration, which is quite safe, and uh, we believe that this is a really important aspect to move on to the clinical jobs. So what I would really say is that you know, viruses in nature you know, make us really sick, like you know, uh, recent Ebola outbreak. But if we just uh, combine our scientific tools to make really uh, well-engineered and designed materials, we probably can use this deadly virus to save people from the really deadly disease such as cancer. Okay? Thank you very much.